Finasteride is a magical wonder from the world of medicine, and it is probably the most used halos drug out there next to minoxidil. Yet, even though with all other kinds of medication, we see people who are using customized dosages for their medication needs. Why are we not seeing the same thing in finasteride? Dutasteride is prescribed in a 0.5 mg, a 1 mg and a 2.5 mg dosage for hair loss. And still finasteride is prescribed in a 1 mg dosage only. One size fits all apparently. Why is that? Well, first we need to take a look at how finasteride actually works. Finasteride is a 5-alpha reductase enzyme inhibitor which is a really fancy way of saying that it gets rid of the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. From now on, I'll just refer to the enzyme as 5-AR, by the way. 5-AR is an enzyme that will combine with your male hormone testosterone and undergo a transformation into a new hormone called dihydrotestosterone which I also now will refer to as DHT. So testosterone will combine with 5AR and create DHT. We already know from literature and studies that DHT is the main culprit when people experience hair loss. So reducing the amount is always the first step anyone should take in their fight against hair loss and Finasteride does exactly that. You see, by reducing the amount of 5-AR enzymes in the body, we also reduce the amount of testosterone that can get converted into the hormone DHT, which, as I just said, destroys your hairline. But why is it that we all agree that one milligram is enough for everyone? Did the medical industry just pull that number out of thin air? If you're inclined to think about the pharmacology, or how the drug is broken down. It only lasts in the system for a short period of time. The half-life, which essentially means the amount of time before the level of that drug drops to 50% in your body, is about eight hours for finasteride. And think about this for a second. If I take a tablet of finasteride, the amount that is floating around in my system is going to reduce by half in a period of eight hours. In that case, if that was the only metric or mechanism that we were looking at, then we'd need to take a tablet three times a day to maintain sufficient levels. But we don't need to. I do believe that the only reason why people are offered a 1 mg a day solution is because it is the most effective dosage compared to side effects if you spread it out on an average population. But that also means that you might be on one side of the extremes of the spectrum. Let's say that this side is people who are extremely sensitive and will have great results with low dosages but also high side effects if they take just a bit too much. And on the other side is people who don't get a lot of side effects and need a higher dosage to get sufficient results to reverse the hair loss, like yours truly. Well, that means that they just took the middle people into account when they agreed that the most beneficial dosage would be a one milligram a day standard dosage of finasteride. Once again, the big evil farmer wins. But there is hope, because you don't need to chop up your finasteride to half pills to reduce your daily intake. So why is that exactly? Well, the reason is that it is not about the amount of finasteride that you have floating around in your body. We talked about what finasteride does. The conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone involves the enzyme called 5-AR or 5-alpha-reductase enzyme, and finasteride blocks that enzyme. That is what we need to focus on. When finasteride comes along and blocks this enzyme, it forms a complex bond that is quite stable. But this process to recommend with that enzyme, you basically need to make a new enzyme, the 5-AR, which actually takes a while. Generally, for that enzyme to be rebuilt in your body or remade, whatever you call it, it takes somewhere between 
three to five weeks. Of course, that doesn't mean that you just can take a tablet every three to five weeks. It means that there's going to be a slow buildup of that enzyme again. The way you should approach it is to find the smallest dosage of finasteride needed to maintain adequate level of low enzyme activity. We don't want to block it completely. We want that level to be below a threshold amount. And by threshold amount, I mean the threshold for when you start to regrow your hair. That can be a very individual thing and you'll have to experiment a bit back and forth with that. So what is that threshold for you, me or for the next person? As I just said, it varies from person to person. My approach is to start low, slowly build up until I start to see regrowth. In general, we see that taking one milligram every other day for many people hits that sweet spot. It is providing the efficacy you're looking for while minimizing side effects. It is not just about finasteride itself. It's about what it does to the enzyme that is the most important aspect and how much it reduces this level and for how long. That is the fundamental factor we should be looking at. While a milligram a day for some people is fine because they're not too sensitive to it and it stabilizes their progression of hair loss, for others, it might be too much and they need to reduce the level. But unfortunately, finasteride is not always enough for most people to reduce the hair loss and even reverse it. And this is why I usually recommend adding something like IU58841 or any other topical antiandrogen. If you don't know why IU58841 is crucial for you to reverse your hair loss, I strongly recommend that you go and watch this video on IU58841 and its effect it had on people like Derek from moreplatesmoredates.com.